Good King Hezekiah. We're going to look this morning at how Hezekiah remained faithful in adversity. We have noted the times that Hezekiah was born into when he came to office as king of Judah. We recognize that the times were very, very difficult. And we remarked that how it was similar to our times as believers. The times we live in are very difficult. We read in 2 Kings 17, the king of Assyria invaded all the land and came to Samaria. And for three years he besieged it. And we know, of course, that he besieged Samaria. And then eventually, after the three uh, years besieging it, he took uh, the northern kingdom of Israel into captivity, never to return again. We noted also that uh, the temple worship that God had instituted had long ago stopped functioning. The people in uh, the southern kingdom of Judah didn't gather in the temple to worship the Lord. What they did was they brought in all this plethora of foreign gods and they worshipped them like poles and all the rest of it, the sun and the moon and what have you. They worshipped these foreign gods instead of worshipping one true living God. This was the times that King Hezekiah came to the throne. We note also that uh, King Hezekiah was a godly king. He was a, a king who was wise and faithful to the one true living God. In a sense, he couldn't wait to get on the throne. His father had been on the throne and just wrecked the country. He wrecked it. And then Hezekiah couldn't wait to get on the throne when his father died to make amends, to re-establish uh, godly worship. We read in 2 Kings 18 that Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before him or after him. Hezekiah was a very wise and faithful king. We noted about the temple worship, it fell out of fashion, and we noticed that all the previous uh, kings of Judah, including Hezekiah's evil father, did not worship God in the way that God had asked them to do so. And also we noted that they had stopped remembering uh, their escape uh, from uh, Egypt. They, uh, they didn't celebrate the Passover anymore as God had commanded. And we noted also that Hezekiah very bravely, whenever he was established as king, he went throughout the land, the whole land, destroying physically all these gods that the people were uh, worshipping. They cleansed Hezekiah and the people cleansed the land of all these foreign gods. We noted that even uh, Moses' bronze snake, remember the bronze snake? Hezekiah destroyed the bronze snake, an incredibly brave thing to do because the people were worshiping it. So this morning, let's notice that uh, firstly, God blesses even in adversity. In 2 Chronicles uh, 32 and verse 1, after all these things, that's all the things that we've talked about. After all these things and these acts of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judah. Now whenever you first read this story, you read them chronologically through the history of good king Hezekiah, you sort of, why? Why, after all these acts of faithfulness, did God allow Sennacherib to invade uh, uh, the southern kingdom of Judah? Hezekiah uh, was obedient and faithful to God. He restarted the Passover celebration. He, re he cleaned out the temple. We noted that the last time. He cleaned out the temple of all the garbage and he uh, fixed it all up and got the people to come back regularly into the temple to worship God in his chosen way. And uh, as we noted that 
these were incredibly brave acts because the people throughout the land were worshipping, were worshipping and sacrificing to these foreign gods. But Hezekiah said, hey, hold up fellas, stop this now. And he went throughout the country and he destroyed them. What incredible bravery. Our text tells us that all Hezekiah's work was seen by God as acts of faithfulness. You see that in verse 1? After all these things and these acts of faithfulness. And we ask ourselves, how then? How and why? After all these acts of faithfulness, could God allow Sennacherib to do this act of savagery? Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judah. We all empathise with good king Hezekiah. We've all been there, haven't we? We've all been living what we consider would be a faithful life. We all are. Uh, we're actively involved in God's work as God has gifted us. Each one of us is active in his work. We're seeing people, young and old, hearing about the Lord Jesus and what he has done for them. And we've, we're using our God-given gifts for building up the body of Christ, as Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. And after all these acts of faithfulness, the ceiling falls in on good king Hezekiah. The ceiling falls in on us on occasion. We all have incidents in our life uh, where we thought everything was hunky-dory, everything was going fine, we're happy with life, God's happy with me. And then all of a sudden that ceiling falls in. No matter how appreciated God's rich blessings are to Hezekiah and to ourselves, we know that we learn more through adversity than prosperity. Isn't that true? Think about it. Whenever, uh, whenever something happens in our life that we're not very happy about, it drives us to prayer. Whenever everything's going hunky-dory, we have to challenge ourselves. Am I as fervent in my prayer whenever everything's hunky-dory? Or am I more fervent in prayer whenever things aren't going so well? Because it's true that adversity drives us to prayer. And it happened to Hezekiah. And it happens to us. Paul tells us clearly in 2 Timothy 4, <coughs> Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Now, that's a very clear statement from the Apostle Paul that's there because of the work of the Holy Spirit in his life. The Holy Spirit recorded, if you're being faithful to God, you will be persecuted. There's no point whenever bad things apparently can be our life. Well, Lord, why is this happening? He's already told us that it will happen. But he's with us 24-7. And he will help us to learn whatever it is he allows this, these acts to come into our life. Sennacherib attacked Judah. He attacked Judah on two occasions. The first time he sent messengers who uh, were very blasphemous uh, to Hezekiah. Very blasphemous. And uh, at that time, in that first time, they actually... Uh, took over all the fortified towns. In Isaiah 36 we read, In the fourteenth year of Hezekiah's reign, Sennacherib king of Assyria attacked and captured all the fortified cities of Judah except Jerusalem. He didn't attack Jerusalem. <coughs> the king of Assyria, we read in 2 Kings 18, sent Rabshakeh with a great army of King Hezekiah at he sent Rabshakeh with a great army to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem, but he didn't uh, besiege Jerusalem. He didn't attack it. We read in 2 Kings 19, as soon as King Hezekiah heard it, that this message from uh, Sennacherib, it says, he tore his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth, and notice, he went to the house of the Lord to pray. Whenever his 
the ceiling fell in on him. What was the first thing he did? He went to the Lord to discuss it with him. The prophet Isaiah told Hezekiah in 2 Kings 19, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid because of the words that you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have reviled me. Behold, I will put a spirit in him, so that he shall hear a rumour and return to his own land, and I will make him fall by the sword in his own land. Now I'll come back to that idea later in the sermon. But it was a prophecy that uh, Sennacherib will not defeat Jerusalem and he will get his comeuppance eventually. And that's exactly what happened the first time Sennacherib attacked Jerusalem. He heard the rumour and had to go away again. God told the people of Israel in Deuteronomy 6, and listen to this, this is interesting. God said, when you eat and are full, then take care lest you forget the Lord, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery. It's true, isn't it, when everything's going well for us, we tend to be less fervent. It's true, sadly. It's true that we're less fervent. And God says when you eat and are filled, when everything's going well, take care lest you forget the Lord. Hezekiah, everything was going super duper for a while. He didn't forget the Lord because when things happened, he went to the Lord to talk to the Lord about his problems. Hezekiah, through the good times, continued to remember his God his success about turning uh, Judah back to the worship of God and destroying all the, all the foreign gods. He was faithful through all that, but he remembered that it was all done in the power of God. Hezekiah, through the good times, continued to remember God. In our passage, after these days, after these things and these acts of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judah. Hezekiah reacted positively. He went to the house of the Lord with his problem. And uh, secondly, he also listened to the word of the Lord from Isaiah. It's tremendous. He was very fortunate that during his life as king, he had the prophet Isaiah to encourage him <coughs> greatly in those days. He listened to the word of the Lord from Isaiah. He was reading 2 Kings 19. That he, uh, Isaiah says to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid because of the words that you have heard. Maybe there's a lesson for us. As I said in uh, my uh, introduction, that so many people are afraid today uh, all this bother with the weather. Uh, I watched a little news this morning before I come out and it's all fires. Everywhere seems to be on fire and everybody's really worried. Maybe we should save more of our plastic. Uh, maybe we <coughs> should sell our petrol cars and, uh, and buy, a, uh, buy a, uh, an electric car. Uh, maybe we should uh, stop going out so much and breathing outside. Yes, maybe we should stay more inside and, and, and get, uh, get some way of blowing fresh air out there. You know what, I'm, I'm being silly here, of course, right? Because we can't do anything about it because God controls the weather. Yeah? I mean, talk to him if you're concerned about these problems that we appear to have. It seems to me, uh, and let me just say, from an ignorant point of view, I don't know anything about these things, but it seems to me that weather is cyclical. Yeah? I mean, years ago, I remember fires in Australia and all that. It was a very hot country uh, during their summer, right? And they habitually have fires. And other places, there's floods. You get the point I'm making. Maybe there's a lesson for us. Thus says the Lord, do not be afraid because of the words that you have heard. People will try and scare you into getting rid of your petrol cards. Don't fly in jets uh, and, 
forward and make sure that your train is an electric train, train not a, a diesel and all the rest of it. God is in charge. God blesses even in adversity. Secondly, Hezekiah prepared for Sennacherib's attack. We read in uh, verse 2 of our passage. In verse 2 of our passage. When Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and attempted to fight against Jerusalem, he planned with his officers and his mighty men to stop the water and the springs. He planned. He planned for Assyrians coming and besieging. A look at King Hezekiah knew that God was in control of everything. Hezekiah knew that he had to do his part. You see, as believers, we just don't lie in bed all day and let God do whatever God wants to do. We have to play our part. God leads us where he wants us to go and what he wants us to do. So Hezekiah had this promise from God that uh, Sennacherib will not defeat Jerusalem. But he went out and did what he had to do. And he wisely said, why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? Now this is an amazing uh, technical uh, advance that Hezekiah accomplished. The main spring of Jerusalem's water was outside the city. And what he did was he blocked up the spring outside and he, he, he tunneled through the mountain. <laughs> He tunneled through, and out of fact, they started in both ends, and they tunneled. Now remember, this was, what, 3,000 years ago? He tunneled from both ends, and they met in the middle. And what he did was, uh, the, the Pool of Siloam was where the water came to, and filled up there. And the Pool of Siloam was lower than the Spring of Gale. So the water flowed through this tunnel into the centre of Jerusalem and it meant whenever Sennacherib came there was no water, there was no water outside the city, a brainwave. And apparently today you can see this tunnel, you can actually go into the tunnel uh, that Hezekiah built. I want you to notice that Hezekiah did not plan all this work by himself. There's no such thing nowadays as what they used to call a one-man ministry. Every church doesn't have one man who does everything, right? Because God has gifted everybody in the congregation to do it. You all have gifts <coughs> given to you by the Holy Spirit. You have gifts that are given to you to build up the church that you attend. Yeah. So you have these gifts and God expects you. So Hezekiah didn't do everything by himself. He had these men. He planned in verse 3. He planned with his officers and mighty men. And uh, he didn't work alone. You see it says in Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall. One will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls. And there's not another to lift him up. Teamwork is vital. We're all small congregation here, but the gifts that we have combined is amazing. We can do here what the Lord has called us to do. You see, 1 Corinthians 12 tells us, uh, if all were a single member, <coughs> where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. But not only did Hezekiah see the importance of making sure the city had a regular uninterrupted water supply, he also built up the city's walls. In fact, he built an extra wall outside the city for security. He worked resolutely and built up the wall that was broken down and raised towers, etc. You see, Hezekiah did a lot of preparation before Sennacherib came. And this is a very important point. He uh, did a lot of work behind the scenes before Sennacherib came. Whenever we uh, worshipped in Belfast when I was at college, we were there for oh, four years, 
one of the elders in the church was a professor of English in Queens. And in middle age, him and his wife felt the call to Spain. And uh, they shared this with the church. He was an elder there, and they felt it explained to the church that they had this strong call. Uh, European Christian Mission felt a strong call to go to Spain to minister for the Lord. And they thought about how could they prepare? What was the best preparation they could do before they went to Spain? And I can hear you all about to shout out, learn the language! <laughs> it seems, seems so obvious. So Mike and Harmony studied Spanish for a year before they went. It does not make sense. Just like good King Hezekiah, he knew Sinacre was coming. Yes, the Lord had told him Sinacre was coming, and he prepared for Sinacre coming, as we must prepare for what the Lord has called us to do. And the time's just about gone, but let me deal with a third point quickly. Go, uh, firstly, God blesses even adversity. Secondly, Hezekiah prepared for Sennacherib's attack. And thirdly, God is always faithful. Uh, if you turn over to 2 Kings 19, I'm going to refer to some verses here. 2 Kings 19, and uh, Kings, of course, comes before Chronicles, Samuel King's Chronicles. 2 Kings 19 and verse 14 says, Hezekiah received a letter from the hand of the messenger. This was the second attack. And read it. And Hezekiah went to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord. And I love this passage of scripture. I've used it many times as a sermon illustration. And Hezekiah got so incensed with this blasphemous letter from Sennacherib. And he went to God. And he laid the he led the letter out uh, in the temple. And he more or less says to God, Look at this, Lord. What are you going to do about this man? <laughs> it, it, it's just wonderful. Hezekiah went to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. He talked to the Lord. And he was incensed that the Lord couldn't let this pass. He had to deal with it. You see, whenever trouble came, Hezekiah had only one option. He went to the Lord. Notice exactly what he did. Hezekiah went to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. But notice in 2 Kings 19 and verse 35, that night the angel of the Lord went out and struck down 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. God had promised Hezekiah in verse 34, I will defend the city to save it for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. So, verse 35, that night the Lord kept his promise. We read in 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. And that night that Hezekiah went to the Lord, the Lord uh, sent his angel throughout the camp of the Assyrian army and destroyed 185,000 of them. Friends, we don't know when the Lord Jesus will return. He said himself, he, he doesn't know when he will return, but he will return. And it's best to repent that the Lord could return today. If the Lord was to turn in the day, are you ready for his return? That's a question we must all ask. Am I trusting in him alone for my salvation? If the Lord returned today, would he take me with him to heaven? Or would he uh, consign me to hell? That's a decision we must make. <coughs> God promised me, I was reading uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Come unto me, all you that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And at that moment, I asked the Lord to come into my life and to save me and use me. And at that very moment, he did. He kept his promise. And if you would ask the Lord into your life this morning, 
He'll keep his promise as he did with Hezekiah, as he did with me. He will keep his promise. Now, I'm going to leave that there. God blesses even in adversity. Hezekiah prepared for Sennacherib's attack. And finally, God is always faithful. Please remember 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. What a great God we worship. Now we're going to